Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do a walking animation in Adobe Flash CS4. Now for this tutorial, I will be using the bone tool to animate the legs. So you will need CS4 if you're going to follow along with this. Now if there's a demand, I might make a tutorial later on on how to do a walking animation without the bone tool. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll see is I have a cartoon character already drawn, and actually this character was done in a previous tutorial that I did, which you can find on YouTube if you want to follow along with that. However, I did make a couple of changes. First, I did make the character a symbol. And again, if you don't know what symbols are, I have a tutorial for that on YouTube. But what we're going to do here is we're going to double click on it to go into the symbol. And as you can see, we're in it right now. However, I actually have a symbol within a symbol, and there is a reason for this, and I'll get to that later on. So let's go ahead and double click on the symbol again to get into the second symbol. And as you can see now, we are in two symbols. And now we have access to the layers that we drew from the previous tutorial. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our bone tool and we're going to animate one of the legs. And of course, we're going to try to mimic a walking animation with these legs. So what I'm going to do is first point out that in my previous tutorial, I actually put the foot and the leg on separate layers. But the bone tool seems to work better when they are on the same layer. And so I'm going to go ahead and I actually already did that. But if you still have your foot and leg on a separate layer, just go ahead and put them together. Anyway. With one of the legs highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and lock all the layers. But then I'm going to unlock the leg layer that I want to work with. That way I won't grab any unwanted stuff when I'm working with the bone tool. Now I'm going to go over here to the bone tool. And I'm going to go ahead now, and actually I'm going to zoom in here really quick so I can get a better view. I'm going to go ahead and start at the top here and click and hold and just drag down to about where I think the knee would be, right about there. And then I'm going to just click and go down to the foot, like that. Now, let's go over here to our selection tool. And let's go ahead and give this a test. Now, sometimes the bone tool doesn't work exactly how it should. Sometimes the lines disappear. Sometimes it creates a line at the top of the leg, as you can see right here. We'll have to fix that later on. And it can be kind of annoying, but it's just something you kind of have to work with when you're working with the bone tool. But anyway, for the most part, it seems like it's going to work. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some frames to the timeline so we can animate this leg. So let's go down here and let's go to about frame 10. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and insert a pose. Now when I do this, I of course added more frames to the leg layer than I did the other layers, so those disappear. But then I'm going to simply go ahead to go to frame 20 really quick and also insert a pose, just like that. And now I'm going to actually come through my timeline here and just insert frames up to frame 20 really quick just so I can get everything back, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to start at frame 1. And again, the way I draw my cartoons, it's very like exaggerated and very cartoony. So the walking animation I'm going to do here isn't going to appear to be like the most realistic ever. But again, that's just my style. And you can tweak this accordingly to what your style is like. So anyway, I'm simply going to come here and we're going to just kind of bring the leg up about like this. Let's try. And now let's go to frame 10. And we're going to bring the leg to about like this. Now again, how much you move the leg will depend on how exaggerated you want your walking to be. Or it depends on how fast the character is walking and so on. Okay, now let's go ahead and go back to frame 1. And let's right click frame 1 on that bone layer and go to copy pose. And now let's go to frame 20 and right click that and paste the pose. That way we will have a loop 
and we can loop the animation as much as we want without it looking weird or anything like that. And this might take a second depending on your computer speed and what the bone tool feels like doing that day. So anyway, once we have this, you can come through here and you can kind of see how it's going to look. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the second leg to kind of correspond with the first. So again, we're going to do what we just did before. I'm going to unlock all the layers. I'm going to select the leg and I'm going to make sure the foot and the leg are on one layer, which they are. I'm then going to lock all the layers except for that leg layer. And one more thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to actually hide this other leg right there just so I can get a better view of what I'm doing here. And in fact, it might be a good idea for right now to hide the torso as well, just so you can kind of see everything of the leg. Okay, once you do that, highlight the leg and let's get our bone tool. And now, once again, you're just gonna start at the top and you're going to just work your way down first to the middle and then to the foot itself. Let's grab our selection tool and make sure that no lines are disappearing or anything weird like that. And it seems to be working pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to come back here to my timeline. I'm going to click this eye icon twice to bring everything back into view. So now, again, I'm going to go ahead and go to my second leg layer here, and I'm going to insert a pose at frame 10, and then insert a pose at frame 20. And again, you don't have to manually do that. Like if you're at like frame five and you move the leg, it's going to automatically put a pose in for you, but I'm just kind of doing it this way just to kind of organize everything. Anyway, at frame one now, we're going to want to do kind of the opposite of what the first leg is doing. So, since it's bent this way, we want our other leg to be kind of more bent like that. And we can go back and tweak this later on if we need to. So now let's go to frame 10 here. And now we're gonna bring this leg back. Kind of like this. And then, once again, we're going to just copy frame one of this leg and then paste the pose on frame 20. So again, we can make a loop if we choose to. Okay, so now if we come here, we can see the legs moving like that. And um, as, you, as I pointed out before, we have a line here and I don't want that line there on that leg. And we can eliminate that. And what we can do is we can go ahead and convert all of these, this whole um, armature layer to um, individual frames. And then you can go through and clean up each frame, which is a little bit tedious, but sometimes you have to do that. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I wanna see how this looks in motion. So first, I'm going to go back here to the first symbol, just like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and make this symbol 20 frames and I'm going to insert keyframes at frame 10 and frame 20, just like I did before. Now what I'm going to do this time, let me just zoom out here really quick so we can see, is I'm going to go ahead and let's say at frame 10, I'm going to just move my symbol down just a couple of clicks like that. So that way it kind of looks like he's bobbing up and down when he's walking and then frame 20 is gonna snap back up. So once you do that, go ahead then and just insert a classic tween, just like that. So now he kinda of looks like he's bobbing up and down slightly when he's walking. Now I'm going to come back out here to my main timeline on, the, on scene one on the main stage, I mean. And now I'm going to go ahead and tween this so he actually moves, so we can kind of see how it looks. So on frame one, I'm simply going to drag him over here. And then let's just extend this to frame 50 by going to frame 50 and right clicking and inserting a keyframe. And then I'm simply going to move him over at frame 50 like that. And then go back to frame one and create a classic tween. 
Now if we hit return or enter, we can see this kind of in motion here. And it looks pretty good for the most part. It's pretty slow. It's a pretty slow, steady walk. So I think that's pretty good. Now there's a couple more things I want to do. As I said, first eliminate this line, but also I kind of want to make the arm move. So let's go ahead and go back into our symbol. Let's double click it and then double click it one more time so we can get into our layers here. And I'm going to unlock all these layers really quick so I can grab my arm. Now the arm and the hand are two separate layers, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight them both by holding in my shift key and then clicking them on the timeline and I'm going to hit F8. I'm going to create a symbol out of this. I could use the bone tool to move it, but in this case I think just making it a symbol and just kind of pivoting it will be good enough. So I'm going to name the symbol arm and making it a graphic is fine and I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my free transform tool and you see this little white circle in the middle? I'm going to click and hold that and move that up to the top where the shoulder is. That way when I move it, it will pivot like that and I can just don't have to worry about like actually moving it, it can just pivot the way it is. So I'm going to start the arm right about here and again I'm going to go ahead and insert keyframes on frame 10 and then frame 20. And at frame 10, I'm going to go ahead and move the arm like this. And then frame 20, it will be the same as frame one so we can make it loop. And now I'm going to go ahead and of course create a classic tween by highlighting those two frames right there, one and 10, and then creating a classic tween just like that. So now, we can see our arm move along with our legs. And if we go back out to scene one here and we just hit enter, we can see that play out. It's moving a little bit slow for me, but then again, it's probably glitching. So, but we'll go ahead and test that out by going like this here. There we go. And actually, that's going pretty fast. So we can go ahead and even slow this down by simply extending these frames out a bit more and then go into test scene like that. Okay, the last thing we need to do is, of course, as I said, we need to eliminate that line. And actually, I lied. That isn't the last thing we need to do. I'm going to put a shadow in underneath him after this. But anyway, let's go back to that leg layer. And as we can see, it's still an armature layer. What we're going to do is we're going to click it, and we're going to right-click, and we're going to select Convert to Frame by Frame Animation. So now, as you can see, we have all individual frames. So now what I'm going to do, and again, you have to do this sometimes if the bone tool isn't cooperating with you. We're just going to go in here and we're going to clean this up a little bit. So I'm simply going to go through each frame here. Again, tedious, but required sometimes. And I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate this really quick. And I'm going to speed up the video here just so we can get through this. Okay, now there is one more thing I need to do as well that I didn't actually see before, really. And that is, you'll notice that when we do the animation here, that the leg isn't quite <laughs> connected to the body. So we can simply just take the body layer here and highlight all that. And in fact, we have to do more than that actually. We're gonna go ahead here and we're going to lock both of the leg layers here and then we're going to unhide everything by double clicking that eye icon and we're simply going to highlight everything here and we're just going to move it down a few frames like that and the arm layer is going to need to be moved separately when it keyframes and I'm going to just simply right click uh, frame 1, copy the frame, and then paste it on the frame 20, just so again, we have that perfect loop there. And there we go, that is better. Okay, so come back out here. And the final thing we're going to do then is add a shadow. 
So when I come back out to my first symbol, the symbol where I actually had him bob up and down, I'm simply going to create a new layer and I'm going to move that layer below him and I'm going to come to my shape tool here and select the oval tool and I'm going to have no line and I'll have it black and I'm going to go ahead and just draw a little circle like that and then I'm going to just uh, highlight it and hit F8 and create a symbol and name it shadow and hit OK. Now we could color it gray or we could do what I'm about to do here and that is go to the color effect uh, dialog on your properties and go to alpha and then put the alpha to about 75 ish and that way when you actually have an environment your shadow will kinda sh you'll be able to see the environment through the shadow a little bit too so it adds a little bit more style to it so now if we come back out here and if we go to control test movie you can see it play out and it's actually a little jittery but I think that's because I have so much stuff running on my computer it does play smooth and once you do yours you'll be able to see that play out so that is how you make a basic walking animation and again you can go ahead and tweak it to however you want like I said if you have him run you're obviously going to have your arm move differently you're going to have the legs move faster and maybe even more widespread and all that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and use this as a foundation and play around with it and I think you'll find that you can do some pretty amazing things with that I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you guys next time